Hi, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio, and in today's technique video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to use fine line black underglaze and sunshine enamel alongside stamps to add pattern and color to your pieces. These tiles are an example of what you can do with this technique. We're going to be using stamps to add black outlines to our pieces, and then come back and paint into the outlines with sunshine enamels. So if you like painting, this technique might be right up your alley. For this technique, you're going to need surfactant, squeegee oil, fine line black underglaze, lavender oil, a palette knife, a brush, a stamp, a tile, a sponge applicator, and an enameling square. Also pick out some Ferrero Sunshine enamels. Today I'm going to be working with our enameling squares and those are 28 gauge steel that have a porcelain coating so you don't have to apply a counter enamel or a base coat and you can get straight to the stamping. You can either make a decorative tile or cut your shape to make some jewelry elements. And you're gonna to wanna to start off by applying some surfactant to clean your surface. Just a little dab will do ya. And then just make sure you come all the way out to the edges and clean that surface. And then you can wipe it off or rinse it off. Just make sure that you remove all of the surfactant. My surface is ready to go. Now that your surface has been prepared, you're ready to mix up your fine line black. I like to work on a tile for things like this. And I'm just gonna scoop some out. And then add some squeegee oil. And there's no super exact or scientific method to this you just want the fine line black to be opaque. So if it's transparent looking, then you need to add some more fine line black powder. And I like the palette knife for incorporating all of the dry to the wet really easily. I like to kind of drag it across to make sure I'm getting rid of any lumps. And that's a nice black. So this is good to go. So I'm going to use a sponge applicator to pick up the fine line black. I'm just going to kind of pounce and do it. And evenly distribute it on the sponge before coming over to my stamp and applying it. Come back and pick up some more. Once you've got a nice even coat on the area you're going to be using, you can just pick up your piece and figure out placement and then set it down and then come back and apply some pressure. I'm going to clear this out of the way. And you just want to apply some even downward pressure on your piece. And I'm doing this upside down so I can kind of see where my circle is since I've got a very small piece that I'm stamping onto. And then just flip and raise it up. And look how crisp that is, wow. It looks really good. I'm gonna allow this to dry and then fire it in. I have my kiln set to 1450, but you can also use a torch if you'd like. While you're waiting for your piece to cool down from firing, now's a good time to clean your brush and stamp if you haven't already done so. Just some dish soap and water will clean them up well. So I have my fired piece and you can tell the fine line black is fired in when it feels nice and smooth and it's a glossy surface instead of matte. So that's all set to go and I'm gonna be mixing some sunshine enamels to paint into the black outlines with. So I'm going to be mixing some lavender oil with my sunshine enamels 
You can use the squeegee oil from before if you'd like. I just like how the lavender oil is a little thinner. Um, to me, it kind of helps this look look sort of watercolory, which I think is nice. Just uh, two or three drops of lavender oil. And again, I'm using a palette knife to mix with. And the sunshine enamels are also nice because you can kind of control the opacity and you can make them thinner if you want them to be a little more transparent and use less pigment. Or you can make them sort of opaque. And again, you're just mixing it until you don't have any lumps. So that looks good. I'm going to move on and mix all my other colors so we can get to painting. I have my colors all mixed and I'm ready to start painting. But just before we begin, as a side note, this is plenty of sunshine enamel. I'm not even going to begin to use part of it, but it's really hard to mix evenly in small batches. So you can just come back to this at any point and add some oil and work with it as though you just mixed it fresh. So I'm now ready to start painting. And you can do this several ways. You can paint all of it all in one go, or you can lay in specific colors in small areas, fire those in, and then come back. And I like to do that because sometimes it's hard to keep your colors from bleeding into each other. So I'm going to start with the little tiny orange accents that I have in this piece. And if you're really picky, like I came out of the line there some, you can come back and remove some stray enamel once it's dry really easily with a pick. And that's for cleaning up really, really fine details if that kind of stuff bothers you. I think when all is said and done, no one's going to be able to really tell, so I'm just going to leave it. Because this is a really fun and relaxing process, and I don't want to get too nitpicky with it. So I'm just going to paint all these orange accents in and then fire it. That way I can paint the yellow around it without worrying about my orange bleeding in. I fired this first round of sunshine enamel in, and I did so in a kiln at 1450, but you can do this with a torch as well. So now that those are fired in, I can paint around it without having to worry about the orange bleeding out into the yellow. So I'm just going to come in with my yellow. And just like before, I'm kind of filling in those areas. And I really love the look of this and how it's kind of lighter in some areas and darker in others and looks kind of watercolory. I think it really shows that it was handmade and just makes a really soft, lovely look. So just spend some time filling in the rest of these shapes. It's a really relaxing and enjoyable process. I'm going to fill the rest of this in, and we'll see what it looks like fired. So here's my fired piece, and I just wanted to point out that if you go over the black, it'll still come through. Like in this background area, there wasn't really anything to fill, so I just kind of painted it with blue, and you can still see the black through it. So don't worry if you accidentally come over your lines. They'll still look great. Using this technique is a really quick and easy way to make a lot of pieces that look like they belong together as a series, but kind of have something different going on for each individual piece. So I used this technique to make a fun little charm bracelet. And I just wanted to point out here that, again, depending on how thick you mix your sunshine enamels and how much pigment you add, you'll get a slightly different look. I didn't add as much pigment to these ones, so you can see the black a little more strongly. Whereas in this case, when I had more sunshine enamel mixed with my lavender oil, it was a little more opaque. I think they both look really nice, it's just a little different. This technique allows you to really quickly create some beautifully detailed pieces. I hope you give it a try. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.